Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this week we are continuing the sermon series where we're looking at these statements that Jesus makes where he says, I am. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. And uh, we're tying this to the Old Testament where the God of the burning bush tells Moses that I am has sent Moses to rescue his people. So Jesus is tying himself to God. And what we've been seeing is as Jesus speaks these statements, he explains to us more and more what it means to have Jesus as, as, as this divine human to be our Lord and Savior. And this week, I think, is one of uh, my favorite I am statements. Uh, as a Christian, I think many of us love this statement where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anybody heard of that one before? Yeah, if you've been to Sunday school, you've probably heard that one before. It's a, it's a good one, right? You better get on the right path because Jesus is the way. He's the way to eternal life with the Father. He, he's the way, the truth, and the life, and it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful knowing that no matter how turned around we get, he, he is the way. But to really understand what Jesus means when he speaks this fully, we've got to understand the context. And this has been true for all of these statements. You have to understand somewhat the cultural context of the day, but also the, the context immediately surrounding this and the scriptures. In, in Jesus' day, the context was there was a lot of people that claimed to have the way. There was a lot of people that claimed to know the way. And most of the time, these, these people would be religious leaders, and they would gather you together, and, and their way would be a, a set of rules and regulations. If you followed their ways, and you followed all their rules and their regulations, then you'd be on your way maybe to everlasting life, maybe to a full life, maybe to a life where God was going to bless you, and it was, there was a lot of stress. And we see this, that there was many, many religious communities that were surrounded uh, or, or sort of founded upon this premise that they had the way. One of them was kind of the ASEAN community, which was near where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. They, they, they were built around these rituals and customs and regulations, and they, they claimed to know the way. And if you were to follow them, you had to follow these rules almost perfectly. Also in Jesus' day, if you were to follow a rabbi or become a, a disciple or an apprentice of a rabbi, you had to follow the rabbi's way. And if you followed the rabbi's way, you, you hit all the check marks and the checkpoints that you were supposed to hit, then, then maybe one day you yourself could become a rabbi. But you had to follow the way. And in, in their custom, the, the way was always these rules and regulations, things that you had to do that you couldn't fail at. You had to make sure you hit all the checkpoints. And in a way, that's not much different than how I think oftentimes we view the way. And, and for a moment here, I don't want to talk about our, our faith, but just when you think of, of the way or making the way or finding the way, I think so many times we put pressure on ourselves to hit those checkpoints. Let me give you an example here. Many of you have gotten to know me. Um, I, I'm pretty much a planner. I like to plan out way far in advance. I like to know my way. I like to know what's going to happen and all the check marks that I, I'm supposed to hit. And several years ago, my wife and I were planning a cross-country road trip. I don't know if any of you have ever done that all across the country. We were moving from St. Louis, Missouri out to Seattle, Washington for my first call to be a pastor. And we decided we were going to have some fun while on, on the journey out there. So we wanted to see Yellowstone and uh, Mount Rushmore and the Black Hills of South Dakota and the Badlands and, and all of these national parks and the Grand Tetons and, and, and all, all of these, these national parks and these wonders of the American West. And so we, we planned out our way. And me being a planner, but me also being a cheapskate, I, uh, I decided that I could get on Priceline about a month in advance. And I could plan out my trip, how long it was going to take me to get from each place to each place. And I could Priceline a hotel, and you can get some amazing deals on Priceline. I was getting four- and five-star hotels for between $40 and $50 a night. You know, these, these were amazing deals. But if you've ever used Priceline, 
you know there's a catch. The catch is they're non-refundable, right? So if you book the hotel and you don't make it along your way to that hotel, you're paying $40 or $50 a night to not stay there. There, there's no refund, there's no cancellation. And I, I said, well, I'm a planner. This is going to be great. There's going to be no problem. I'm going to make my way there. I, I, I plan them out with an hour or two to spare at each place so we could have a nice time at each place. I, for a whole week across the country, I planned out all my hotels, 40 or 50 bucks a night, a couple hundred bucks all said and done, and I was all set to go. So we packed up our moving cubes. They, they got shipped off, and then my wife and I, we piled into our car with the rest of our stuff, and we we started on the road out from St. Louis. And on the very, very first day of the journey, I'd planned the whole journey down almost to the hour of where we needed to be. We were going north, I believe it's I-29, uh, between Iowa and Nebraska. And we were driving, and Amy looks out, and she goes, man, it's so pretty. There's all these lakes around us. And I remember thinking, this was 2011, and I remember thinking, wait, these lakes are kind of weird. There, there's farming equipment in the middle of the lakes. And then Amy mentioned, she goes, huh, you know, I haven't seen a car go the other direction on the interstate at all for like the last 10 minutes. And we're sitting there thinking, this is before smartphones, you know, or at least before I had a smartphone. I got a smartphone very quickly after this. And, uh, and then we saw this sign that was flashing, road closed ahead, flooding in 20 miles, use alternate routes. And I was there in Iowa, needing to make it to Sioux Falls, South Dakota that night to stay at this very nice Sheraton in downtown Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I had run into a detour. And sure enough, we didn't know where to go, so I told Amy, we had a map, but I said, everything's flooded out. I, this map's no use to me. So I said, we'll just follow the signs of the detour. Five, six, seven hours later, we're literally driving through the cornfields of South Dakota. Here's the actual picture of what the road was like, why we couldn't drive through it. And we were literally driving through the cornfields of Iowa and wherever we were with these sandbags piled up next to our car. And finally, about four or five in the morning, we rolled into our four-star hotel <laughs> in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we got to sleep for about an hour and a half because then we had to be up to make it to our next stop along the way. We like to think we know how to plan the way. We, we, we like to, to work on the way and, and get everything planned out. But, but every once in a while, we run into flooding in Iowa. And this was a big, big flood. Everything flooded out in Iowa and kind of Nebraska that year. But um, it, it's kind of scary that way. And I think we can laugh at that, but it's true in our faith walk. I think so many times in our faith walk, in our walk with Jesus, we say, you know, this is what we need to do. If I do this, if I, if I follow a devotion that's this way, if I, I do this and I do this and I, I come to worship and the worship service is done this certain way, then everything's going to be okay. But I think sometimes we run into flooding in Iowa. Sometimes we can't even control it. Sometimes we can. Sometimes the, the flooding might be one of our own sins. Maybe something happened that, that we do that's horrible that just tears apart our relationship with God. Sometimes it, it, it's, it's something else. But we run into flooding in Iowa, and then what do we do? Now, I think many of us, the, the way of our life, it maybe is with our faith, but maybe this Mother's Day, you think the way of your life is, is to be the perfect mom or, or to be the perfect dad. And you say, you know, this is what I need to do. And, and you work really hard, you work really hard, you try to teach the, the faith to your children, and you, you work and you work and you work, and you set up all the checkpoints that you need to make, and then, then maybe one day you realize you're not making any of the checkpoints. Maybe your kids aren't turning out exactly how you would have envisioned that they did. And you feel this stress to try to get them back on the road to try to avoid the flooding in Iowa. Or, or maybe for you, that the stress that you feel is, is that of a retirement stress. Maybe you've, you've plotted out the way, right? Sure, you go, Jesus, I'll get to heaven one day because of him, that's great, but, but my life I worry about. You know, I, I plot out the way and I, I wake up every morning and I'm stressed about the stock market. And I, and I worry and I worry and I worry that, that if it goes down, I'm not going to have enough. That, that my planning isn't going to be enough. That I'm not going to have enough for the way. 
so many times in our life when we try to plan out the way, especially in our faith walk, I think we realize that we fail, that we encounter this flooding that's in Iowa. And if you look at the context of John chapter 14 and John chapter 13, where, where Jesus says he's the way, that's exactly what's just happened with the disciples. The disciples have been following Jesus for three years, you would think they'd understand his way. You'd think that they would get it. And Jesus sits them down and they're celebrating the Last Supper. And as they're, they're celebrating the Last Supper, Jesus looks at them and, and this is what he says. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One of you guys that's claiming to know the way, that's claiming to have your life all figured out, one of you is going to betray you. Of course, we know that's Judas, right? And we can say, well, well, Judas, yeah, he, he was messed up. He didn't get the way. But in the context of all of this, probably one of the best followers of Jesus, Peter, right, is very impulsive. He says, ah, not, not, not me, right, Jesus? It, it's not me. You know, Peter, Peter looks up to him and says, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Come on, Jesus. You know, I'm going to be there. And Jesus answers him, well, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Even you, Peter, are going to encounter flooding in Iowa. Even you are going to fail. And I think even if Jesus is pointing out that Peter's going to fail, that is so true for us. So many times as we try to plan out that way, we fail. Or we encounter this flooding or roadblock that, that maybe we can't even control. And the disciples must be there. They've been trying for three years, and basically Jesus has just called them out and says, you guys can't do it. You're too much of sinners. You're, you're, you're too messed up. You'll never be able to get the way down. You'll never be able to hit all of the checkpoints. You guys are failures. That's when Jesus speaks the very, very next thing that he says. And he says it to people at the point of their failure. He says it to you and me where we are thinking that we can't have this whole motherhood thing figured out. He says it to you and me when you, where we're sitting there at a, at a roadblock in our faith and we're not quite sure what to do or where we are going. And this is what Jesus says. And if you listen to this in the context of what it was sp spoken, I, I, I think it, it just gives me goosebumps. Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. He's, he's gone to prepare a place for you. D don't, don't worry, he's handled it. He's got, the, he's got your room reserved for you. He's, he's going to handle it. Don't worry. And, and then he asked the disciples, do you know how to get there? And the disciples go, no, 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 no. We're, we're failures. We, we don't even know where you're going. And it's that point that Jesus says our very, very famous statement. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way through it is through Jesus and what he's done. And he, he shows us what the way is. Right before he speaks this in John 13, right before he calls out the disciples on, on basically being failures, you want to know what he does for them? He takes the form of a slave, of a servant, and he washes the feet of, the very feet of the people who are going to betray him and turn him over so that he's hung on a cross. That's the way. He washes the feet of his close followers that cannot get it right. And ultimately, he shows us the way of his cross where he goes to the cross for you and me. People who can't get life right, people who can't get our faith right, and he goes and he suffers and he dies but that failure cannot keep him down because he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
He's raised up for you. And, and he's, he's up there. Uh, he's ascended to be with the Father, and he's reigning for you, and he is with you every step of the way, even in your failures. He forgives you, and he carries you through. So today, listen and hear. Know that no matter how many roadblocks you encounter, no matter how much flooding in Iowa you have, no matter how big your price line bill is, Jesus has paid off your debts. He forgives you, he loves you, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.